Hello and welcome to the final topic of this unit number five. That's reading and interpreting graphs. So what's the goal today? Um, what I want you to be able to do for any graph you come across, I want you to be able to identify what do the X and Y axes represent, and then I want you to be able to read some information from it. And what this is really going to do is going to help you with the grade 10 literacy uh, test that will be coming up next year for you in the grade 10 course. It's a good starter. It helps you with science when you're interpreting graphs and reading graphs. So it's, it's an important unit. Uh, and I'm going to sort of step you through into the introductory stuff. And then you can do some more complicated stuff in the grade 10. So here's the first example. You already have this on your page. So here's a graph. All right. You have that to the right. So something similar you might get on the literacy test. So question one, we're answering the following. Wants me to A, identify the X and Y axes and state what they represent. So the one thing I want you to do, or my focus in this course, is I want you to be able to tell me this is my x-axis right here. Okay. So on any of the graphs, any of the homework, I want you to mark it clearly. Similarly, I want you to clearly mark the y-axis. Very, very important because now I can answer question A. And we're just going to do it as a point form. Okay. So x-axis. Okay represents, what does it represent? For a graph, a proper graph, it's going to tell you, and it's always labeled at the bottom. Okay, so days. So it represents the days of the week. All right, so it represents the days of the week. What does the y-axis represent? So again, you got to take a look at that y-axis represents the, and this one's really labeled properly, that it, whoever did this graph did a great job because it's clearly marked number of magazines. All right, represents the number of magazines. All right, so that's step one. So you know that this graph, it involves days of the week and number of magazines. So that's what this graph is really telling us. Okay. Moving on to part B. How many magazines were sold on Friday? So in your graph, you need to locate Friday, which is right here. We go up and we find there is the given coordinate. So someone plotted the coordinate for us. All right. So there's the coordinate that we're interested in. How many magazines were sold? Well, what we do then is you go back to the y-axis to find that information. All right. So in this case, I would say that on Friday, it's between 10 and 20. So I would say on Friday, 15 magazines were sold. All right. C part. Which day, which day was? Which day were there 25 magazines sold? I guess that's what it sounds, right? So which day were there 25 magazines sold? So that means now, I'm going to change color here. Let's go to a nice pretty purple. i got to find 25 on the axis here. So 25 occurs right in between the 10 and the 30. So I'm going to draw a line across from there. All right. And there's only one coordinate that matches, and that's this one here. Over here, there's no coordinate, so it's some, we can't really use that information. So we need to find a coordinate, and that's that one right there. So then if we take a look down, it tells me Tuesday was the day that occurred. So on Tuesday, 25 magazines were sold. D part, which day had the most sales? So that means you're looking for the highest coordinate. I've located the highest coordinate. That represents the most magazine sales. Looking down, I see that it occurred on Thursday. So on Thursday, the most magazines were sold. All right, there we go. So there is just reading information, and that's all I'm looking for in the grade 9 course. I want you to identify the X and Y axes, 
and I want you to be able to comfortably pull information from the graph. Okay, so these graphs are very similar to the ones that you've already plotted in a previous lesson, right? It's just they've already been made for us. So the second one here, again, what do the x and y's x and y axes represent? So a, the x axes, and then y axes. So again, I highly recommend for yourself. Hey, there's my x axes. There's my y-axis. It's just easier to kind of get used to. All right. X-axis is tests. So x-axis represents tests. Okay. So one test, two tests, three tests. So we're looking at the title is Frank's math test grades. So it really represents tests. Okay, which test are we looking at for Frank? On the x-axis, or sorry, the y-axis, it's his grade. So it represents grade. So we are dealing with a graph that specifically talks about a test and the corresponding grade. So that's what that x and y-axis, if by just type, writing that out for yourself, you know you're dealing with test number and grade on each test. Okay? B part. Which test scored 100%? So again, the process is you look for the 100%. So that 100% is right here on the y-axis. I'm going to draw a line across. So I'll go across the 100%. And when I look at Frank's results, there's only one test that corresponds, and that's that one right there. So now I got to kind of look straight down and see what test was it. It was test number three. So Frank scored 100% on test number three. All right. C part. Which what mark did Frank get on his fifth test? So we look up his fifth test, and it's right here. All right. So with my eyes, I'm going to use a line here to help me out. So fifth test, I'm going to look up until I reach the coordinate that was graphed. There it is there. Once I find that coordinate, I then draw a line across. And it looks like 95%, or 90%, I guess, somewhere in there. So Frank scored 90%. On test five. And the last question, which test was his lowest mark? So what you're looking for is the lowest coordinate that was plotted because we're on the y-axis. We're looking for the lowest grade. If we're looking for the lowest grade, it's the lowest coordinate on the y-axis. So as I scan across, I see that this is my lowest coordinate on the y-axis, the lowest grade. And it corresponds with test number one. So Frank's lowest mark was on test number one. And that answers all our questions in that particular graph. Okay, so like I said, I'm just trying to get you into the mode of being able to answer questions. Um, related to simple graphs, all right? Pulling the information out. So these are the types of graphs. These first two are very similar to what you'd see in science, all right? So you need to transfer that over into science. So my third and final example I want to look at, this time we have a graph that's talking about some guy, Russell, and his height at three-year intervals. So that means that simply the x-axis is going to go by threes. Zero, three, six, nine, twelve. So it's counting up by threes. Okay, so A part again, I want to identify what does the x-axis represent, so it's clear in my head, and similarly, what is the y-axis. So again, I'm going to label it, and this time someone's already gone ahead and put the x on for me, and they've done the y, so they've done the work for me, I'm going to highlight it anyway. So what does the x-axis represent? It's marked, it's age, so x-axis represents age, and the y-axis 
when I look at it, it's the height in feet. So it represents represents height in feet. Okay. So we know that we're talking about a graph about Frank and it's dealing with his age and his height in feet. That's what we're analyzing here. So question B, how tall was Russell at age 15? So we need to find age 15, which is clearly marked here. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to take our eyes and we're going to move our way up. So I'm going to use a, a line here to help demonstrate what I'm doing. So I'm looking up to find the coordinate that corresponds with 15. Once I find that, I'm going to zoom across. And to me, it looks halfway or close enough. So therefore, at age 15, Russell was 4.5 feet tall. All right. C part. How old was Russell when he was three feet tall? Three feet tall. So now I'm going to find three feet tall and measurement of height is on that y-axis. Y-axis is your height. So that's the three. Okay, you don't want to get confused. There's two threes that appear on this graph. This is the one we want because it's the one that deals with height. Again, kind of scanning across with your eyes. I move across to find the coordinate that matches up with three. I then drop down to see what age he was at. And at 12, he was three feet tall. So at age 12, Russell was three feet tall. He wasn't very tall for three or for 12 years old. Three feet, that's not very tall. He got tall though. So point D then. What age range did Russell start to grow fast? Explain why you think this happened. So this is very indicative. This is what you would run into on the literacy test. A question that asks you to extend reasoning from this graph. Okay, so when did he grow the most? Well, here we see that his growth was pretty pretty slow. He wasn't gaining a whole lot over those years. And we see that now he slowed down, but from here to here, this time to this time, the graph really gets steep. It really jumps up. So I would say, for myself, I would say that he really started to grow from about this point over to this age here. All right, and again, that's because it's so steep here. He just grew so quick in that range right there. So from ages, what do we got? 12 to 21. So I'm looking at 12 all the way over 21. So from 12 to 21, Russell grew fast. Now, why would a boy grow really fast from 12 to 21. Well, this is usually, usually when children grow the fastest. Children grow the fastest. All right, so it's called a growth spurt, right? You go through a growth spurt. I've seen it before. I don't even know if that's spelled right. It doesn't really matter, does it? Um, I shouldn't say that. To me, it doesn't matter. So a growth spurt. I've seen so many of the grade nines come in. You guys will come in at, you know, below my shoulders. And when you leave, I have to look up at you. Um, it's amazing how fast you grow in a short period of time. So anyway, that's the last lesson. That ties everything together for you. Again, this is uh, something you're going to use on the literacy test next year so you know if there's a graph, you feel comfortable. If you go into science class, these are the skills you need to read those graphs. So please make sure you take that or transfer that skill across. Good luck with the homework, and if you have any questions, let us know and we'll uh, help you out after the video.